Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you what I'm going to call a bread substitute, sulfur emerger. And this fly is kind of a mashup of several patterns and the name's a little odd, but we'll talk more about that as we go. I'm going to tie it on a size 18 TMC 200. I'll bring back that boot lace that I've used on other sulfur patterns and we're going to use that uh, mallard flank feather dyed lemon for the body and we'll rib that with brown uni thread and we'll use some, this is an older material and we'll talk more about that it's a rabbit foot and some super fine dubbing for the to finish off the thorax and we'll hold it all together with some pale yellow perfect hatch 8 dot thread so let's put one of those 200 um, size 18 hooks in the vise and get started. And while we're wrapping thread, I'll start to talk more about the uh, how this thing came about. So I was uh, looking to create a yet another variation of a sulfur, just trying to do something a little different here today. And um, there I'm showing you, let me pause and say that I'm showing you the uh, one strand of each color of that boot lace and I kind of brushed them together and I'm going to use that for the shuck. So going back, I wanted to do, um, I don't know, I'm kind of hung up on emerger patterns and subsurface and some very wet flies, um, wet surface flies, I should say. And uh, so I was thinking about the rabbit's foot emerger and I wanted to make something just a little more complex maybe a little more visually stimulating than the rabbit's foot emerger, but it had to still be easy to tie. So I've added in the shock, wrap forward. I've also doubled over a piece of that six aught dark brown uni thread, and I'm gonna twist that together and use it for a rib. And if you've looked at other the other sulfur patterns I did, I did a nymph this way. I think I did a dry fly this way as well. And uh, I take a little bundle of that mallard flank. And uh, this is from the larger feathers that came in the package. And it's a great way to use these feathers is to um, tie them in by the tips or tie a bundle of the fibers in by the tips and wrap them for a body. So we'll go around and uh, wrap some thread and make the underbody nice and level. And I'm going to use the rotary feature and things tend to get loose here. So we'll put a couple of whips here to hold that in place. And I've got a different camera mount now. So actually it's not much easier, but I can come at this at different angles. So I'm going to try doing this without using hackle pliers or anything on that, on that mallard. So I'll get a hold of that, get everything out of the way and, um, we're going to wrap the mallard in reverse. And then when we do the rib with the brown thread, we'll come back in the, the conventional direction. And I know this is all backwards for you guys because I'm left-handed, but um, I apologize for that. I was born kind of backwards. So. so I'll stop here and hold the end of the mallard, throw the uh, bobbin over the top, and reach around the camera and switch hands so I can complete that that cross wrap over the uh, over the mallard flank and I think I see in the camera I didn't see it live but I see in the camera where it kind of loosened up just a tad but it's not a problem because the ribs gonna hold everything in place so it's another place for a couple of whips or in this case um, I have the bodkin with the half hitch tool laying on the bench, so I'll just grab that, put a couple of half hitches in place to hold things so they don't come loose. And put the thread over the bobbin cradle. And we'll grab our loop of uh, brown thread. I have the shepherd's hook in there and I'm going to just twist it. And you don't want to overdo that. You don't want it to um, start to kink up or furl on you, but a nice uh, tight, you know, twist I think makes it a, a good solid rib. And work our way forward. Four or five wraps 
in the main part and another wrap or two just to give me a place to tie off. So we'll get a couple of uh, thread wraps over the rib. Some alternating wraps because I feel like that holds tighter when I do that. And snip off the excess. So I think that's what I was going for there. The uh, You can see the shock. You can see, and you'll see those couple of fine hairs, the wild hairs going there. So I'll come back in and trim those. And you can do whatever you guys typically do on shocks. You can do here if you like to cut them off straight, longer, shorter. Um, you know, make it your fly. Do what you want to do. So we like what we see. I'm going to come back in. And this is another departure here a little bit. I'm going to use this. This is one of the darker strands from the boot lace. And I'm using it for two purposes. I'm using it for kind of an underwing in the back that's going to prop up that rabbit foot hair that I put in. And I'm going to trim off the front. You'll see at the end, um, up at the eye of the hook. And I want to leave that little orangish color up there. If you've looked at pictures of sulfurs and a lot of mayflies, they, their eyes are, um, in, in the case of the sulfurs, the eyes are kind of a, an orange color. So I just kind of left that up there as maybe a bit of a trigger point or a, a hot spot, but um, we'll talk about that and you'll see it at the end. So I took a little bundle of the uh, fibers off the bottom of that rabbit's foot, plucked out the longer and the stray ones, and I have something on the back that looks, I don't know, kind of like a wing, but pretty messy. And we'll trim the front off. And I took a couple of wax at it because I didn't want to just go in there crazy and, and trim off any of my uh, boot lace. I want to save some of that. So as I'm picking away at that, now I did a little research on this. I was looking for fly patterns here, and um, there's there's a breadline nymph, there's a, a bread crust nymph, there's a I don't know it's a, various there's bread in the name of a dozen flies out there, and uh, this is kind of a mashup of a couple of those, but then the uh, I wanted to use the rabbit rabbit's foot as well and this is a place where a lot of people use cdc or different things for these emergers i'm not a huge fan of the cdc um, it gets wet or slimy or a little seaweed on it and then i'm kind of out of business so i don't know for the smaller flies where i'm not using deer hair for for wings or trimming something like that the intermediate size hair that seems to do the best and it's a good floater is the the hair from uh either a hare's foot or a rabbit's foot. I know they were real common and there were a lot of patterns uh, a couple of years ago and I bought them in a couple different colors and I kind of went through a phase and then I was sitting on them. They're in the bin and I stumbled across them and decided I wanted to go back and make something out of the rabbit's foot. So I'm just kind of checking things out there. I have a lot of uh, dubbing still left on there but I think I can use it up and uh, just kind of maintain a good shape for the head of this fly and use up that dubbing without trying to pull it pull it off. So I left that little wisp of uh, boot lace stick out the front. I'm getting ready. I'm going to um, do my whip finish underneath around just behind the hook eye. So five or six turns, four or five turns, whatever you're a fan of. I'm going to put a little head cement on here so it's going to stay. We'll pull that tight and just kind of slice off the thread. If you pull the thread tight and hit it with the blade, then it's the only thing that gets cut and you don't chop into the fibers. So I just trim that off about even with the hook eye. And hopefully that represents those, those reddish eyes on some of the mayflies, some of the sulfurs. And then this stuff's a lot like deer hair where you see the wild hairs and you want to just go wild with the scissors and and trim them all off and, and make it perfect. But basically this is supposed to look kind of like a mess. 
So, but I did preen it a little bit and do some snipping and I don't know that I think that's what I'm after. It's kind of a messy fly. It's kind of complex to look at and hopefully the trout will find it interesting as well. And, uh, we get to, I don't think we missed that sulfur hatch yet. I think it's still on its way here in Pennsylvania. So hope this helps you out. Hope you uh, catch a lot of fish with it. If you hung in there to the end and want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon and until next time, be safe.